Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast and the Recenter with Christ app, episode 646. Glory to God who has given such authority. A guided Christian meditation on Matthew chapter 9, verses 5 through 8. My name is Chaplain Jared, and I do this podcast to help you find more peace in your life by connecting with the true source of peace, who is Jesus Christ. I try to do that through a couple different styles of meditation. This one will be a Lectio Divina-based meditation, following a Christian meditation style that goes back centuries. If you want something with more open space and silence, I invite you to check out my freeform style episodes. But for now, let us dedicate this time to the Lord. Almighty God, open our hearts and minds, open our eyes to see your glory. May we rejoice in your spirit that guides us each day. And as we say, in Jesus' name, amen. Embrace, in this moment, embrace the spirit of God that can guide our minds and our actions. Place your trust in God. Reject the idea that you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. That's not accurate. You don't have to save the world. That job is already taken. Jesus Christ has power on earth and in heaven. He has power over the things that nag at our hearts and souls. But equally, he has power over the things that afflict us from the outside. Trust in the Lord. Trust in his protective care. And trust when he allows us to go through things that we can get through them. Those things can refine us and strengthen us. Because we don't understand God's ways does not mean that there's not purpose in them. Trust in the Lord and let go of your fears, cares, concerns, and worries. Let go of those things that nag your heart, that fill you with uncertainty, that fill you with worry, let it go. Let your body rest and let your muscles unwind as you rejoice in the sovereignty of God. There is nothing too great that God cannot handle it. And yet we don't dictate his timeline. Glory to God. Now as we read from Matthew chapter 9, keep your eyes and ears opened to the glory of God. This is immediately following when Jesus forgave a man who was brought to him who couldn't walk. 
This is what he said, starting in verse 5, reading from the NRSVA. For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take up your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up, and he went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Continue pondering this scripture. Now I'll be reading from the ESV as well and notice the similarities and slight differences in the way that the original Greek was rendered into English. For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But the you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Continue pondering this scripture. The scripture immediately follows what we read last week, where Jesus forgives the man's sins. This led to him being challenged by the teachers of the law. They pretended to limit the power of God. They doubted what God could or would do. Another theme from this scripture is about the glory and influence of God. When the people saw what Jesus had done, they praised God. They were in awe. Powerful acts and blessings can cause people to recognize the power of God. This is obviously true in the case of Jesus himself, but it's also true in the case of his apostles. Additionally, it's true with you and I, the things that Christians do, the way our lives are changed, the way we treat others. When God's Spirit moves, it draws glory to God. This can provide an intermediary and an ideal to aim for. There are two extremes that we should avoid, though. On one hand, 
the belief that we can do everything of our own strength. And on the other hand, that we can't do anything or make any meaningful progress towards what is good. And the problem with it, this dichotomy is that both of those extremes are false. We don't need to be, we don't need to be trapped between pride and hopelessness. A third option exists. We can recognize that the doing of good we can recognize that the doing of God, we can recognize that the doings of God and the workings of His Spirit can inspire and guide us. And with this strengthening influence, incredible and miraculous deeds can draw the wonder and awe of God from us and those who see those things. So the invitation remains for us to open our eyes to the nearly limitless ways in which the world we live in demonstrates the glory of God. So pause for a moment and consider the marvelous things you see in your life or perhaps begin to search for those things, for the glory of God that has occurred right in front of your eyes without being noticed. This could be everything from the beauty of creation to the mystery is the silence. It includes the spread of the love of God, as well as the tangible, charitable actions and service offered by those who love God. So let the wonders of God fill your heart. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, as we reflect on the awe that we have experienced from your powers and your works here on earth, we give gratitude additionally that your spirit can move in us to allow those works to be seen by others. Please allow us to maintain humility, but also direct and strong faith and the things that you can do through us. Inspire our minds and our hearts, our hands and our feet. And bless us to be directed towards those things that would be most helpful and beneficial for us to do. And this we say in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. And now I invite you to sit in contemplative silence before the Lord.
now the application phase. Try to summarize in your mind the things you've thought about or learned or experienced here. And then try to visualize how you can apply those things into your life. What things should you do differently or who should you try to influence with these words? Thank you for joining me today as always. May God inspire you and bless you. God can bring awe out of this world. He can cause the very stones to cry out and praise his name. And yet he gives us opportunity to see it. So may we each one of us become more aware, first of all, of the glory that he is already bringing to pass in this earth and humility to bring forth more through His Spirit. May others see and be amazed by the works of God. If you think of someone who would benefit from this message, I invite you to share it with them. You can share the website christianmeditationpodcast.com or you can show them the podcast in whatever format you found to listen to it. The free iOS and Android app called Recenter with Christ. I think I have something of a technical uh, situation going on with them at the time of the releasing of this podcast, but I invite you to check those out. Those have been downloaded and been reviewed quite well as additionally to that. really been incredible to me to see the way in which God uses simple things like for example this podcast and the the very simple production that is involved in me making it and producing it has been downloaded nearly three three million times um, throughout the the years that I've been doing it It kind of fills me with awe the way in which God can do so great things with such little may God continue to bless your efforts those areas in which he knows that you can do. Perhaps it's sharing an inspiring word, doing acts of service, contributing to something meaningful, worshiping together with song or or with word, studying with others. There's so many different ways where we can do the works of God. May God's Spirit bless you to know which ways those should be. This I say in Jesus' name. Amen.